What's up guys, Turner here. It's been a long time. Uh, I'll have another video out soon that will kind of explain some things and what I, my like uh, plans for the future are in this channel. But for now, I'm going to show you how to get the latest version of a uh, spigot server or craft bucket server running for the latest Minecraft version. Um, there will be another video out that talks about my channel and what I kind of plan to do with it in the future. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to start. Spigot is just like, I would say like what everybody mostly uses now, although I've just recently <laughs> got back into, you know, server management for Minecraft. Um, it's been a long time, but I'm assuming everyone still uses Spigot since it's, it was the biggest at the time. Next to Craft Bucket. So how you get uh, the latest Spigot jar is you have to download build tools, which I'll leave links in the description. Um, let me actually go to that. Links in the description. So you just pick your. I'm gonna do Windows tutorial. If you need Linux or Max, it's or Mac. Did I say Max? Mac. Uh, I might do a Mac tutorial too later. I have a Mac, but I don't really know if I want to put kind of game related stuff on that. I use that strictly for coding and programming and school related things. So I don't have any games on it. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how to do Windows. If you need Linux or Mac, there's very good you know instructions here, and it's actually somewhat simpler on the other ones. So for Windows, all you need to do is you know download Git. Uh, so just download this, and then it'll open up you know like your exe and just save it, and then install it wherever you want to install it. Probably just local C drive. Uh, once that's installed, then you can download the build tools. And I'll leave another link, another link in the description, and you can download them here. Let me just save that. And I actually already ran it, but the video was too long, so I wanted to redo it. So I'm just going to delete all these real quick. Kind of, I should have deleted these before, but I forgot. Okay, so save the build tools in whatever folder you want. I just named a folder called build tools and now all we're gonna have to do is run it so to run it I'll leave this link to oh if you want to make an automated process um, all you have to do is put this code in a batch file and if you don't know how to make a batch file oh did I close that document one minute if you don't know how to make a batch file all you do is make a text document and name it a dot bat at the end so let me find minecraft build tools so you go here, text document, so you can name it, you know, uh, run, and then dot .bat, and then just hit yes, and hit edit, and then all you would do is copy and paste this code in here. Um, I don't do that since I usually make a new build tools folder after every time, because I delete them. So to run build tools, all you're going to want to do is go in your build tools directory. You have to be in the directory where you download a build tools. So if your folder is called, you know, just like temp or, you know, ASDF, you know, be in ASDF wherever this file is. So what you're going to want to do is right click and hit get bash. And make sure that this location is the location that has your build tools in it because that's how you, that's how it will run. So all you have to do is type either this or this or this. So the only difference is what version you want to install. So if you want, you know, uh, version 1.12 of Spigot and Craft Bucket, you run this command. If you want 1.11, you run this command. If you want 1.10, you run this command and so on. Uh, if you just want the latest version, um, all you have to run is java-jar and then build tools.jar. You just run the build tools. And that's all you have to do. Now, depending on your computer's power and, you know, stuff you have, components, it will take, you know, different amount of times. I'm going to pause it real quick and then come back once it's installed. Okay, guys, we're back and it's done. And I think I said installed. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the correct word, but it finished now. Uh, one thing I will talk about, too, before um, we actually get to the server part, running the server, is uh, there is a build tools GUI that you can use that somebody has created demon wav wave wav I don't know uh, has made now you can download it here and apparently it's just you know like an application you open and you can run build tools and you can select uh, the latest version of build, uh, what version of Minecraft you want to run and update the build tools all in one like 
like program application so you don't have to download so you don't have to go to you know build tools here and you don't have to download it and run it yourself if well you're still running it yourself you don't have to do all the work if that's what you want to do it does need the net 4.5 application if you don't have it installed here uh most program most computers i mean java or windows not job related windows will have it as long as you know it's a newer computer and you keep your computer up to date it will work so now we're going to get to installing, or not installing, actually running all the servers. So how you know it's done is it just says copying the two craft bucket and spigots right there. So I can close that if I can open it again. Stop misclicking. So all you're going to want to do is have your server folder and just drag and drop whatever you want to use, spigot or craft bucket. We're going to run spigot. Um, the running it is the same exact way, you just have to replace the name. So we're going to close this or minimize it. So this is my test folder, uh, server folder. So now how you actually run it is you just get these command line arguments or command line code. I don't know. It's the bits, uh, you need, they need to be a bat file on Windows for Linux. I think and Mac is like sh files. Yeah. I don't know. So if you're on Mac or Linux just follow these sections because they'll help you out but if you're on Windows you can either copy this one or this one and basically the difference is this one will restart I believe if the server stops or crashes without you typing a stop command so if you type the stop command I think the server will shut down I think but if it crashes I think it will restart I don't know there's I don't, I don't use that one since usually whenever you buy a dedicated server there's options in the host panel so you're gonna make a bat file, which I might as well you know show you how to do that first. So just new text document, we'll name it run.bat, run.bat. Hit yes, right click, hit edit, and then just copy and paste that in here. Now you're gonna to wanna to either change the name of your jar file uh, in here, either wanna name jar, jar file to spigot.jar or rename this. I like to rename this so I know what version I'm always running. Um, if I go, I have a lot of server versions on my computer. I, I still do <laughs> a lot of folders. So if it just says spigot.jar in here, I don't know what version I'm running. Um, so I just change it in here, but you can do it either or. They both work fine. So spigot minus 12 jar. Now running this didn't work for me having this like argument, I think it's called in here. So I'm going to leave it in and see if it works. If it doesn't work, I can remove it. Okay, no, it looks like it's running. <laughs> okay, so it's working now. Last time I tried to run it, this didn't, like I had to remove this to get the server to start. So if it says, you know, some weird error, just try to remove that first. So now we have to hit enter because you need to agree to the EULA that, you know, is everybody totally abides by. Uh, let's just hit save. Um, now you're going to run the server again, and this is the time wherein it will generate the world for you basically, and all the other configuration files. So I'll go through pretty quickly uh, some of them. Um, I'm not going to really touch spigot.jar, spigot.jar, <laughs> uh, spigot or the bucket one. I mean there's, I can go more in depth, but you don't normally touch those unless you know it's uh, for a plugin related, so save all, stop. Enter now that's closed. So now we have our server. I can find my folder again. Okay, so logs files just where all the server logs will be stored. Your latest log, it just like instead of them being stored in the main directory. Plugins, this is where you're gonna wanna install any plugins that you have. Or any plugins that you want to install, unless otherwise specified. Because I believe factions actually makes like a different folder that you put it in besides that but most plugins you install will just install right to the plugins folder um if not the page will save so band ip is just where you know band players will be band players will be with band players will be that'll be ips bucket.yml just has kind of some basic info like if you want to allow the end turn that if you want to warn the counts on overload uh you can either enable that permissions file if you use the default one and don't use a permissions plugin um, and then just, you know, some the shutdown message, some spawn limits, some pretty self-explanatory stuff. 
I don't really know. Honestly, I don't know what commands that YML R is. I think it allows you to do like aliases. Aliases. Fuck it. I don't. I don't know. I've never used this honestly. Um, if you want to use it, um, there's documentation. I'm sure on the Spigot forms. I can actually probably find it and leave you link you guys. Help. Uh, maybe this is actually talking about it. Configuration file for bucket. I don't know. I don't really. I don't really touch any of these since. Didn't really. I don't know. I don't use them. Um, but I'm just gonna start the server again just to show you how to connect to it. If you don't port, if you don't know how to port forward, or you can't port forward. Actually, I'll wait till I join the server. So ops. That will just show your ops. Permissions. Okay, server.properties. I'll go through this really quick, even though it's since you guys probably need to know it. Op permission level, it's either I believe one through four. And it just gives the permission based on like what kind of level you want the op to have. Um I can leave another link. I don't know if I'll be able to find it real quick. But it explains this whole document for like okay, here we go. So if you go on speed installation and there's anything that I didn't cover because I don't want this video to be you know 20 minutes long, um, you can just look in here because each of these explain the document, whatever document they are, uh, like from the official source. So if you click server.properties, here's another. Actually, they might be different too. What you see here, there might be ones that are you know not in there or different. But if you, you know, don't know what, let's say. Not permission level. You can just, you know, control F, op, permission level. Okay, so yeah, one through four. So ops can bypass spawn protection is level one. Level two, ops can use single player cheats except publish. And command blocks, ops level three. Uh, most multiplayer, ops level four can use all commands. So it just is that what you want your ops permission level to be. So if you have any questions more on that, just click that. Because I'm just going to go through the basic ones. If you want to allow the nether, either true or false, your level name, this is the default world name that it will generate. So, it'll generate, like this is a world file right now. If you change that to like, you know, uh, AD or ASD, that the world name will be ASD then. So we'll just put that next to query. I don't know what enable query is, never use it. Allow flight if you want uh, like flying to be allowed on your server. Um, I just leave it at false if like, some servers you might need to enable it, but I don't know. Uh, your server port. This is the port that you need to port forward on your router if you want to host it for other people to let them connect to you. I don't, I'm not doing a short on that. It's different for everybody, but just Google how to port forward. Uh, level type is default. It can be changed to to like flat or super flat or again, if you want that just look at in here and it will give you a tell you all the options I don't use Archon force game mode if you want to force a certain game mode I believe when they join the seed uh, the server IP you don't use this unless you use like Hamachi uh, you put the Hamachi address in here I believe I don't use network that if you want to limit how high people can build <clears throat> if you want to enable spawning in PCs uh, if you want to enable the uh, whitelist if you want to spawn animals true or false Snooper enabled. This, I believe, sends data like back to Mojang about like server crashes, I think, and stuff. I don't know. I usually disable it, but since the, since it's a test server, whatever. If you want to play hardcore mode, um, resource pack shell, or SHA1. I think that's if you have like a resource pack for your server. I believe you'd put the link there. Um, I don't know for sure. You'd probably I'd just you know go download it or go look on the one website. Online mode, uh, if you want to run an offline mode server, that means just other people can connect that don't have a legit version of Minecraft, true or false. Resource pack, so no, maybe this is where you actually put your resource pack, like the file they, for the actual pack. I don't know, I don't use those settings. If you need more info on them, go download them. Uh, PvP, true or false. Difficulty, uh, what difficulty you want it at. So like, I believe like one through three or zero three. Th Zero through three. I'll just open this again. Yeah, zero through three. So zero is peaceful, one is easy, two is normal, three is hard. 
Uh, enable command blocks if you want to enable command blocks on your server for ops, true or false. Player idle timeout, I think that's, you know, if the player's idle, how long until they're kicked. Uh, what the default game mode is, how many max players you can have, if you want to spawn monsters, and the view distance. Uh, the view distance, I believe, can go up to 15. I mean, maybe not, maybe it can go, okay, so it says it could be a min of 2 and up to 32. So ignore what I just said. I thought I saw somewhere we could only go up to 15, but maybe, okay, maybe you can go to 2 to 32. I wouldn't suggest going to 32 because that's going to just create more lag on your server because that's allowing, so if somebody, that just allows a higher render distance for your players. And if you want to generate structures like, uh, I believe the ravines and the villages, and then your message of the day, and this is the, what will show up when people connect. You can have a, you can download plugins that overwrite this and change it. So we'll just save that. I already ran the server, so I'm not going to do it. But to connect your server without port forwarding, all you need to do is have the server running on your computer and on the same machine. Open Minecraft and just connect with the local host and join server. Server. If you change the port, you do need to add colon and then the port after. That's kind of weird. If you want to op yourself, just op your name. Now I'm opt. I can do everything. So that's basically how you set up a server. It was a little longer than I expected. Uh, but the last part is basically just going through some configuration files that you can honestly just look up on here because it's just it's easier, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, so I'll hopefully have some more videos in the future. So thank you all, and I'll talk to you guys later.